I used to work at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and I once participated in a meeting where we all sat around the room and thought about how could we manipulate geophysical systems to use it as a weapon. The meeting was about weaponizing geophysical interventions. That means, you know, could you somehow interfere in Earth functioning in a way that you could use it as a military weapon? Could you change climate? Could you, what could you do in terms of manipulating the sort of Earth's physical systems to, as a weapon? Well, you know, some of the ideas were, were, okay, we could, maybe we could blow up hydrogen bombs, you know, underwater, offshore, and make a tidal wave that would go over a city. And, you know, the result was, well, isn't it easier just to drop the hydrogen bombs on the city? You know, that, that there, now you could imagine, though, say, putting pathogens in a cloud, let the cloud, uh, you know, go over somewhere, then would rain down on your enemy and create, you know, do chemical or germ warfare in this kind of way. And that might work against something that we say is big as the former Soviet Union, where, you know, you could be pretty sure that within a few days th that cloud would rain out. Tore this out of a magazine called The Week for June 10th, 2011. I'm going to read it. You can read the text too. Could bacteria in the sky affect the weather? The idea is not as outlandish as it sounds. New research provides strong evidence that microbes in the clouds serve as nuclei around the water droplets, around which water droplets, snow, and hail form. Scientists have traditionally thought that the precipitation coalesced mostly around the airborne minerals and dust particles. But when microbiologists at Montana State University dissected golf ball-sized hay bales that fell on campus last year, they found high concentrations of bacteria at their cores, the first part of a hailstorm to develop. Study author Alexander Mitchell tells Live Science. Com. And that's no accident, says Brent Krishner, another scientist in the growing field of bioprecipitation, which studies the links between germs and weather. He discovered that one common species of bacteria contains a special protein that encourages snow to form at significantly warmer temperatures than usual. Such an ability to produce precipitation, he says, is an evolutionary advantage for bacteria that feed on plants. Bacteria that feed on plants. advantage for bacteria that feed on plants as it lets them hitchhike on the water cycle to get from host to host as it lets them hitchhike on the water cycle to get from host to host as it lets them hitchhike on the water cycle to get from host to host the stuff they're measuring was done intentionally in 1953, the Navy was responsible for putting flu virus into the fog over the San Francisco Bay Area, and it came over and got everybody sick, and then they used the hospitals as a database. This made the news in 88. It stayed in the news for about 10 days and disappeared, never to be heard of again. Be in the San Jose Mercury News, 1988. This fellow, uh, Brent Krishner, is the one that discovered a special protein that encourages snow to form at significantly warmer temperatures. It's called by him an evolutionary advantage for bacteria that feed on plants.
an airplane introduces a bacteria that was made by a man in a laboratory and this is called evolution. I call it being fucked over. And this is odd. There weren't 200 jets in the world in 1944. This is January of 45. Germany had most of them. This is Royal Air Force, Farnborough, Hampshire, UK. So this represents the paths of many planes and no I don't believe they were prop driven planes. Anyhow, that's the news on bioprecipitation. It's man-made, it's new, and that's an obfuscation report. To all of you colluding kleptocrats out there trying to control the world, I would say eschew obfuscation and embrace the truth. So it's a very carefully worded report, full of concealment, but still telling us the truth. But I bought all these books from the 1940s back to around 1920 on cloud atlases and, and pilots books. Anyhow, here's the 87 cloud atlas. Let me show you something here. So almost every single picture in here has been changed from the 56 and obviously they're all going to be in color, okay? Almost every picture, I'm not going to try and prove it, just take my word for it, except, except for these two. Now, if the things are so fucking common, how come you're using a picture from 1945? I, you know, yeah, I've got a paranoid conspiracy theory going. But I find it peculiar, and I'm sure it was used after 87, and from 56 to 87 is 31 years, the same photograph, when everything else has changed. Now, it doesn't prove anything, but it's still, it's odd. It's interestingly odd. The, uh, I also do not believe that George Bush and his administration cared enough about climate change to do, uh, undertake secret programs to try to offset climate change. If he was going to do something secret, I think it would be kidnapping people and torturing them, but I don't think <laughs> it's about addressing the climate change situation. And so I think what people are seeing are ordinary contrails and imagining that it's part of a geoengineering program, but I don't, do not believe there is any such program.
I think what people are seeing are ordinary contrails and imagining that it's part of a geoengineering program, but I don't do not believe there is any such Fiscal year 1999, 2.3 trillion missing. Fiscal year 2000, 1.1 trillion missing. And DOD is the number one reason why the government can't balance its checkbook. 